Hello there, everybody. How's it going? It's Jesse from Jesse Miranda Stuff here on Floss 2, and I am coming to you on this Saturday, September 30th, 2023, with my next update video. September 30th. Tomorrow is October. <laughs> I'll try to keep the excitement contained. The downside to tomorrow being October 1st is that it means that the end of October is like a blink and a half away. Um, so... Anyway, I'm, I'm excited anyway. It doesn't even matter. I'm, I'm excited for October. I always love this season. So, uh, hi, welcome. <laughs> welcome to both my returning viewers as well as anybody who is new here. Thank you all so much for spending part of your day with me. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Uh, on this channel, I talk mostly about cross stitch and today it's gonna be all stitching. Next time we will have some books and knitting to talk about because I have started knitting. Um, but that's going to have to be next time because I'm, I'm hardly into the project that I have started working on again. Um, so we'll talk about that next time. And as well as my October TBR, because I make a TBR every month and I never stick to it, but may as well share it. Right. So, but we'll do that next time. Um, because today we have the projects that I have worked on for the last week and we have October plans, dark October stitching and my stitching plans for the month of October, including WIPGO, uh, what my WIPGO calls were for October. So, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and jump right in and get started with the works in progress, the things I have worked on in the last week. So these first two projects, I was working on one and then I switched to the other and then I went back to this one. Um, so it's not exactly a timeline, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter. So. <laughs> when last we spoke, I was working on the project that lives in this bag. This is a bag by Hillside Rookery, uh, Olivia B. And in here is my Glory of Autumn. Are y'all tired of hearing me say that? I hope not, because we still have a few more months to go. Uh, so here is Glory of Autumn. Uh, this is a dimensions kit. Artist is Rudy Reichart. And yeah, so I was working on this towards my section finish for the month. This is my piece that I broke up into 12 to see the finish by the end of the year. And everything in me wants to just keep going and just finish it now, but I'm gonna pace myself because I'll get burnout and then I won't finish it and then I won't look at it for another four years. So here is the progress that I made and I got my section done. And I love it. <laughs> I really, I really love it. I love working on this. I'm ready to see the finish line. I'm excited for the finish line, but I really do enjoy working on this. So I finished up my section on Monday, um, pretty early on in the day and had a, about an hour and a half to about an hour and a half stitching left for the evening. So I got started on my October section just a tiny bit early. Um, so I made a little bit of progress here on this side uh, towards my October section. Just a little early because October is dark October stitching as much as humanly possible. So uh, fabric here is a 28 count antique white cashew linen from Zweigart. I subbed the fabric out because I prefer a linen and I don't love the margins that Dimensions Kit gives you, kits give you. So um, I switched it up. And uh, I'm using all of the kit threads, um, except for those instances where I have run out of the kit threads and I'm using a DMC conversion. But otherwise, I mean, you can't, you can't tell the difference. So yeah, so that's my progress for Glory of Autumn. It worked up to a total of like, I think 1700 stitches in September which is my biggest by far. It's my, that's my, my largest monthly stitch count by far. So, so there is Glory of Autumn. So in between those two rotations on Glory of Autumn, those two sessions on Glory of Autumn, I had a new start. Um, and so I told y'all that for the first day of fall, last Saturday, uh, I was going to start Autumn Cloche by Hello from Liz Matthews. Uh, we ended up having 
uh, Tropical Storm Ophelia. It did get upgraded to a legitimate tropical storm. Um, and for me, because I'm pretty far inland, it meant a lot of rain throughout the day and into the next day. Um, but we didn't have we didn't have much in the way of wind or anything like that. Just a lot of rain. Uh, so I had my very moody start to celebrate the the start of fall, and that lives in this project bag by Mamali. It's by Emily C, but it's under her heading of Mamali bags. So this is Autumn Cloche, and I was so excited to start this. Just so excited. So this is a piece that uh, I did purchase the PDF and I'm stitching on it using Pattern Keeper, which is great. It's, it's, it's really great. Um, I did end up working on it Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday a little bit as well because as expected, Sunday wasn't a whole lot of stitching time and so I wanted to make up for it uh, and get a little bit further on, on Monday morning. So I did spend a little extra time with it. And oh, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. So the whole design is about 19,000 stitches, except for back stitch. Um, so it's about 19,000 cross stitches. And so a part of me was like, you know, this is going really well. I wonder if I could stitch this start to finish. And then I was like, no, I don't have time for that. <laughs> I have so many other things that I'm trying to get done this year. I don't have time for that. So this piece is gonna hang out in my whips for a little while longer than however however many days it's gonna take me to stitch it. Yeah, that was, <laughs> I was chastising myself for, for having those thoughts. But it was just so much fun to stitch. You know, I stitched a little butterfly and then I move on to the next one. It was great. So uh, yeah, uh, this is 40 count Newcastle linen in rain washed, which occurred to me what a spectacular fabric to have started on this on this particular day um, and it's by color and cotton it was a fabric of the month I think in 2022 at some point it's kind of a greeny gray neutrally color and I haven't gotten into any of the fun colors yet but I do love those grays so that is autumn cloche so far and hopefully this will feature prominently next year. After I finished my section on Glory of Autumn, I decided to try to get a couple of whip goes done. It only ended up working out to be one whip go that I was able to squeeze into these last few days of the month, but I was really excited for the one that, for the one that I picked. So uh, that lives in this project bag. This was from the 12 Days of Christmas box by Stitch and Button last year. And uh, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous bag. So this is Christmas Quaker Bell Pull by Sticky Dane van der Van Burke. And I will be sure to link that in the description box below for those of you who are looking for it or other designs by Sticky Dane, um, because you can get the digital copies from their website. I will say that they don't work in Pattern Keeper. So just bear that in mind. But I was so excited to work on this. I hadn't seen it since I started it in 2021. And I was just so excited. So this is on a very long <laughs> piece of 40 count Newcastle linen in light mocha from Zweigart. And here's what I mean. Yeah, it's the whole yard. You can see the salvage on both sides. Yep, it's a pretty long piece of fabric. Um, I It doesn't require that much. I just need the extras for my Millennium frame, so... Just bear that in mind. I mean, it is a tall piece, don't get me wrong, but you don't need a full yard length. So anyway, um, I love this. <laughs> I love this. I love this. I love this. So I am stitching using the called for red and green. Those are DMCs. And then the yellow I changed for Petite Treasure Braid. Um, that's PB26, which is my favorite uh, Rainbow Gallery gold. And I love this. This is fantastic. I wanted so badly to get that first page finished uh, because I have the E to finish up, this first R, this Quaker motif, just this top half of it, and then there's another one over here. 
if I had my druthers, I would have kept going for the page finish, but I just, I don't have time. <laughs> I mean, I really, I don't. I am, I'm trying to accomplish quite a bit here and we are in the last quarter of the year. And so I did put like over 1500 stitches into this when it only really needed 1300. Um, so I did spend a little bit of extra time on it, but nonetheless, um, I couldn't keep going to the page finish. So that's what I got to with Christmas Quaker Valpo. So what I'm finding with a lot of these projects is that I love them. <laughs> I love them a lot. And I keep saying to myself, maybe I can find a way to make it a focus piece for next year. But you know the problem is that I'm going to run out of time. <laughs> if I make all of these things a focus piece for next year, I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to accomplish much of anything. So I've got to seriously start trying to figure out what 2024 looks like. So I finished up the rotation on Christmas Quaker Bell Pole on Thursday and I was faced with a choice. Like I could pull out another past called whip go piece that I hadn't reached the goal yet on knowing that I wasn't going to be able to get it done before October 1st. Um, so I'm thinking Snow Queen, which needs four days or 1600 stitches, or uh, Stark House Banner, which needs four days or 1600 stitches, or plus frogging, um, or Once Upon a Time, which needs five days or 2000 stitches. None of that was going to get accomplished between Friday and today. It was just, it just wasn't going to happen. So I could have gotten started on one of those, but I am in the mood for some full coverage. And so I decided to spend these last couple of days working on full coverage. Super low key, super low stress, uh, and just save the whip go for later and try to get it done next month or in November. So I pulled out full coverage and I mentioned towards the beginning of the month that I spun my full coverage wheel and it chose this piece for me for this month. So this is Snow Castle by Heaven and Earth Designs and artist is Randall Spangler. And I love this piece. <laughs> I love Randall Spangler stitching and I love the, the cold of this design and the pretty blues. Yeah, it's good. It's really, really good. Here is where I am up to with Snow Castle. This piece gets me so happy because I am over 30% complete and I'm stitching on things. And a lot of my full coverage pieces, because they are in the first page stages, like it's a lot of background in, in my full coverage stitching life. But this one, I'm stitching things and some background to be sure, but nonetheless. So I am down here working on page seven and working in my diagonals by the block. This is a 25 count Easy Grid Lugana by Zweigart, uh, one over one full cross with the called for DMC, and then I'm using Anchor Black instead of 310. So that's, that's where I got to. So at the beginning of the year, my full coverage, I had grand plans. I was doing 1300 stitches times the number of years since I started it. And because I haven't done much in the way of full coverage stitching this year, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's just, it's just not going to happen. I have done some full coverage stitching, but it has gone more to new starts than the full coverage pieces that I carried with me into this year. It's not going to happen for me to be able to reach all of those goals plus everything else. This is usually the point of the year where I start, I'm not going to do that, so let me just not focus on that goal anymore. So instead, my plan is going to be to try to get 1300 stitches into each of my full coverage pieces and pretty much just stop there. Um, just, just a flat 1300 stitches. It's still a big ask because I have a lot of full coverage pieces that I haven't yet worked on this year, um, but more manageable than my original goal. So um, I'm about 800 stitches into that on this piece and I should 
pretty easily be able to get those 500 stitches in before the end of the day. Um, this section is pretty fast. It's a lot of sky, a lot of very, very few colors. So, no, that is my progress on Snow Castle. And any before and afters will be next time because I'm not done with the rotation yet. So that's everything that I have worked on and everything that I am working on. So let's get into plans. Let's start talking about some dark October stitching and what my plans are for October. So the short version is October I'm going to be catching up on WIPCO. Now I know I said that in September, however, the WIPCO and the dark October stitching are going to be working together, whereas in September they were almost two separate entities for the most part. Um, but a lot of my past WIPCO calls as well as my calls for October, uh, they are October-y, spooky, Halloween, etc. Um, so it's going to work out pretty nicely um, to try to get a bunch of WIPCOs accomplished here in October, which is a good thing because I think I have 13 to catch up on. So I've decided that I'm going to plot this out. I'm going to plan out when I work on particular things. Some of them have WIP birthdays here in October, which is always exciting. Uh, and also it just it's going to make more sense if I plan out when I work on specific things. So this first piece was a call in July. And so I'm going to show it to you again here because it's been a long time. And so a starting point might be fun. Uh, so that currently lives in this project bag. This is by Vintage Owl Lady using the Gasly's prints. Love it. And in here lives my October by the Cricut Collection. Oh, I'm so thrilled to finally get to work on this again. I last worked on this piece in December of 2018. It's been a really long time. And I started it in 2017. And what I have accomplished <laughs> really does not justify the fact that this piece is six years old on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I'm really excited to work on it. So if I get my snow castle stitches in pretty quickly today, which I suspect will happen, uh, then I'm going to start working on this tonight because I just, I might as well, right? Uh, so this is on a beautiful linen. This is 32 count Belfast in gingerbread by Picture This Plus. I mean, it's stunning, right? And here's my starting point. <laughs> yep. Lots to go yet on this one. Um, but this bath fabric, oh, it's so good. It is so good. I love gingerbread. Um, so that is where I'm starting from. And because this is a 2017 whip, it is due to get five days or 2,000 stitches, whichever comes first. So if I get started on it now, that's all right. Um, so I can get keep keep the train going as we head into October. So there is that. And then the other ones I will just show you as they come up. Okay, so let's get into the whip go calls for the month of October. I can't remember what the numbers are, so I'll put them on the screen here. Um, but as previously discussed, I have three WIPCO boards, and so I get six WIPCO calls each month. So, here we go. Um, so some of these things are going to be worked on towards the end of the month after I get some Dark October stitching in, um, and some of them will be worked on in the first half. We'll just see how it all plays out. So first up here, living in this project bag, this is by Be Busy Bags on Etsy, and so I'll be sure to link her shop down below. I love this bag, and I love this project. This is another one from 2021 that I haven't worked on since starting it, and I'm actually going to restart it. This is Fruits of Plenty by Modern Folk Embroidery. It was the stitch along for 2021, and I have originally started this on 32 count, but as I have stated, I'm really liking the 40 count stitching. This is a humongous project. I'm barely into it. So a restart is called for. 
I am stitching this with DMC 3041 and 3042. I love those dusty purples. And um, so this is a 32 count silver moon. And I have here a piece of 40 count silver moon. So uh, it's still a humongous piece, but um, not as humongous. So I'm, I'm excited to get this restarted. Um, I have wanted to, I have wanted to do this restart for a long time. So that is Fruits of Plenty. Okay, up next is another Mamalee bag and there's quite a few Mamalee bags here today. Um, so this one, uh, this is Halloween Sampler by Cottage Garden Samplings. I'm so thrilled about this. This was a 2020 start that I thought I was gonna do um, word and associated imagery uh, a month or every two weeks or something like that um, to see the finish. Yeah, every two weeks to see the finish by the end of the year. And obviously that was three years ago. <laughs> so this is on a 32 count Belfast in Tombstone by Color and Cotton. And I think this was a fabric in a Halloween box from quite a few years ago. Uh, I am stitching this using the called for gentle art sampler threads and yeah it's not going to be a finish this year but nonetheless pretty exciting uh, to get to work on this again. I enjoy stitching letters especially um, an alphabet that is absolutely not predictable like this one is so uh, this should be fun. I'm excited to work on this for more than like a word, <laughs> um, but to spend some good time on it. So as a 2020 whip, it's going to get three days or 1300 stitches, whichever comes first. Okay, up next is a piece that I really wished called, was called for September, uh, living in this Molly bag. <laughs> uh, this is a sampler, and this is one of my favorite samplers. Uh, this is Elizabeth Biggs by GGR. And she's massive, um, but I am, I'm really, really excited to, to work on this again. Uh, this is on 40 Count Newcastle Linen. I want to say this is Legacy by Picture This Plus. I think it's Legacy. And I am stitching this using the Called For Threads, which is a mix of Gentle Art Sampler Threads and Weak Style Works. And I don't have a whole lot of side-to-side -side margin. But I'm making it work. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be enough of a side to side margin. This is so much fun to stitch. This border is another one that is unpredictable. Um, nothing is really truly consistent here. Um, so that's a lot of fun. And I have started in on the tree on the inside. I think I'm gonna spend this rotation working on border because it's an intricate border. It's really fun. Uh, so. Another one, three days or 1300 stitches, but at least it's some progress, right? So that is, that's a lot of fun. Looking forward to working on that some more. Another piece that I haven't worked on since starting it, and this one I started in 2020. Here we have a stitch and button bag, gorgeous butterflies and flowers, and in here lives I mean, honestly, one of my favorite pieces, uh, believe it or not. This is Music Amongst the Trees by Rosewood Manor. Isn't Rosewood Manor stitching just fun? I mean, some of it is a little bit fiddly and annoying because there's one stitch of this over here and then another stitch of that color 45 stitches away. Um, <laughs> so it's a little bit fiddly, but it's also just, I mean, Karen's play with color is just so much fun. So this was a Stitch Mania start for me in 2020. And I'm stitching it using all of the called for threads, which are all DMCs. And I think that this is also Light Mocha 32 count. But don't quote me on that. Um, so yeah, I started this for Mania and I worked in it for quite a, a few days during Mania that year. And not since. Oh, I'm so excited to work on this again. This is a really good one for spring and summer. But I'm going to work on it in October. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to work on this one again, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I think that might be light mocha. Or what used to be called mushroom. My next one is in this project bag. This is also a stitch and button bag. Gorgeous pumpkins, I love the pumpkins. And in here lives my Haunted House Sampler by Twin Peak Primitives. Um, so preview here what this will look like finished because um, I'm stitching on this digitally. And we started this for a stitch along last year? 21? Oh, now I can't remember. 21, right? Mm. Anyway. Uh, so this is 40 count Newcastle linen in old linen by X2 designs and I am stitching this using a bit of a color conversion to overdyes. I'm pretty sure it's charted in DMCs but I'm using some overdyes um, and I think my color conversion is in progress like I'm still I'm still working it out. <laughs> um, I think that those big flowers in the border are in cinders, a really dark, dark skein of cinders. Anyway, um, I haven't worked on this in a long time. Okay, so my last WebGo call for October was a new start, which is very exciting because I already have it in the plans to start Haunted House on Friday the 13th, and that works out really nicely. So I'm going to spend five days on Haunted House uh, and hopefully get at least 1,300 stitches. I suspect I'll be able to do a little bit more than that with five days, but um, I'm going to do at least 1,300 stitches over those five days. And I'm really, I'm excited about it. I'm excited to spend a bunch of time with that piece. So when I talked about Haunted House last week, I don't know why, but it never occurred to me to start a stitch along or a start along. I don't know why that didn't, why that didn't dawn on me. Um, maybe because it is overshadowed by October and dark October stitching. Um, I don't know, but <laughs> a bunch of folks left comments and said that they were going to start either the same piece with me or something else on Friday the 13th just to celebrate the day. So let's make it official. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's call it what it is. And we're going to have a Friday the 13th sell. So it's no rules. It's start along or stitch along. It's anything you feel like starting. I know that October, the dark October stitching and Halloween stitching isn't for everybody. So if you've got something that you have been really, really anxious to start, now's a great time. Um, or uh, if there is a Halloween piece that you are looking forward to working on on Friday the 13th in October, then go for it. Um, and use the hashtag Friday the 13th sell. Um, I'll put that on the screen here so that y'all can see it. Um, and so for those of you who are, who are going to start Haunted House, uh, I am so excited. I am so excited to get that piece going. I am still contemplating regular versus max color because I don't know that I want to fight with 240 colors, but I love the richness of the oranges in the Max Colors version versus the regular version. So I am at war with myself. I already have the regular version loaded up into Pattern Keeper. Um, I have thread organizers. They aren't organized. I haven't purchased any threads yet, but for 88 colors, not for 240. Um, 240, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. I am, I am still in contemplation and I have a couple of weeks to decide. I'm excited anyway. I'm so ready to get that piece started. So that's the plan. Those are the Whipco pieces that were called for me for October. So the plan is to do Dark October Whipco for the first three weeks or so. On the 20th, that is Glory of Autumn's eighth birthday. So I'm going to try to work on that on its birthday um, and try to get my October section done in and around then. Uh, and then after Glory of Autumn, I'm going to be working on um, non-Dark October Whipco pieces. And I have it mapped out that I am I should be able to get it all done. If I stay on task, if I stay on time, I should be able to get it all done 
with the exception of one, um, which may need a couple of days in November. So I might be able to get caught up here in October. Inevitably, I'm going to be enabled for some other Halloween starts, um, but I'm going to try to resist temptation <laughs> and focus on these Dark October things that I'm really excited to get to work on. I'm a little bit bummed that Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow hasn't come up yet. Um, so I might squeeze that in just for fun. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So anyway, that's it for the plans. And that is it for me. I have no haul this week. Uh, and as I said, we're going to talk books and knitting next time. So I'm going to head off here and go get working on Snowcastle and try to get those stitches in to be able to get started on October tonight. So excited. Happy October, everybody. <laughs> we have arrived. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to head off. Happy stitching, everybody. As always, be kind. See you next time. <laughs>